And now, Kathy, at this time, I will turn the webinar over to you. Thank you, Katie, and happy Friday. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thanks for taking this hour out of your day. Uh, maybe you're eating your lunch at the same time. But um, we're going to go over today um, some things about trust. I'm sure everybody on the phone probably already knows how uh, to do the basics in Jurist. Uh, how to write checks, do deposits, and stuff like this. So my focus today is really going to be on some a little bit of the workflow, if you understand that. Um, can you resolve or even determine what problems are if you have any kind of trust balance issues? Do you know what tools or reports and stuff that you can use to um, help you balance your trust accounts? And then also, um, if you have billing and cash receipt issues, um, can you resolve? Of those can you quickly resolve those and and some of this stuff is I've had in my um, knowledge base if you will for over 18 years that I've been with Juris and uh, I've just collected lots of stuff a lot of issues and resolutions and I keep documentation and notes so that um, since I'm so old I won't um, forget things so and if you'll notice um, some of you know this but some of you don't if you notice down in the bottom right hand corner it has Kathy A Baker dash elder on there uh, um, I was married last August, um, but I'm still I still go by ba Kathy Baker. So uh, my poor husband, he probably wonders when I'll ever take his name. But to me, I'm Kathy Baker. So anyway, let's get started. Um, if you have questions, like Katie said, there's a uh, question pane that you can write them in, um, or at the end, um, if you want to do a voice question thing, I mean, don't feel like typing it. Uh, we may have time for some voice questions too. So um, let's get started, and and uh, here we go. So. I may not be the best PowerPoint presentation worker, um, but I'll try my best. Um, things we're going to go over today are the first thing is we're going to look at the trust workflow, talk about some things about that, because if you understand that workflow, then it's going to really help you uh, determine when problems arise at what point of that workflow that you're at, uh, and that is going to decide uh, the point of the workflow, a lot of times, uh, what actions you take to uh, correct issues. Um, we're going to look to see if your trust accounts are in balance, what you should be balancing, what tools or reports there are, what do you do when a client um, does a credit card or a wire uh, transaction um, for their trust funds, but it, maybe it's included with uh, an AR payment you know, and or those funds are automatically deposited in your operating account, either by accident or on purpose, and have to be moved to your operating account. Um, from your operating account, excuse me, to your trust account. And then just some uh, best uh, billing practices, some things that I've kept uh, over the years on how to resolve um, some issues. So the first thing is the trust workflow. And before we even get into the trust workflow, uh, make sure that you understand what our Juris firm vendor means. It's a firm vendor that uh, if you've worked with me straight out of the box Juris, if you bought Juris and you bought the accounts payable piece of it, you wouldn't have any vendors in there, but two. You would have the firm vendor as vendor one or vendor firm, and you would have the master temporary vendor as vendor two or temp. So if you have defined your vendor codes as alphanumeric, the firm vendor is going to be have the code of firm. The temp vendor will be temp. Otherwise, there will be one and um, two. You can rename those where it just says firm and master temporary, you can rename those, but please do not rename them to other vendors. Don't name them to FedEx or Kathy Baker or whatever because that those two vendors are the top one, the firm vendor, is used throughout Juris for trust applications during pre-bill edit. So we wouldn't want a trust check written out to Kathy Baker. Well, I don't know. You can write me a check if you want to, but um, the firm vendor should always stay as the firm and just rename it to whatever your um, firm name is. Next we're going to go to the workflow. So basically uh, all everything starts when you get money from your client and you use a cash receipt to uh, on the trust tab to deposit that money into the trust bank um, for that client and for that matter. And then there are four different types of transactions that can happen. You can ha you can return that money to the client or a por portion of a balance to a client. And if you do, you basically write a quick check. Uh, you create a trust voucher. 
and you can write a check, or, or you can do a quick check, either one. Um, uh, so if you have a third-party payment that you need to pay, you get a bill in from a vendor, and instead of the firm paying it and then you billing the client for that, you can just pay it if it's agreed upon. You can pay it right out of the client's trust money to that vendor. And if you do that, the same thing, you would just create a uh, quick check or create a voucher, a trust voucher, and then write a check. And then that vendor, of course, or whoever you write that check to is just going to become a trust vendor. Um, to transfer funds between um, trust accounts, you could use a cash receipt for this, but this is pretty much my rule of thumb that you would use a trust adjustment if the money is already at the firm. So only use a cash receipt for new money and use trust adjustments um, for money that's there. Maybe you put it on the wrong account, uh, complete matter, so you could do a, a negative trust adjustment on the matter where the money is sitting, or you could do, and then do a positive um, adjustment to the correct matter. Or maybe you've done the wrong, wrong amount, you've got to uh, correct that. So use trust adjustments to transfer money from uh, between trust accounts or client trust accounts. You can even do it from one bank. If you do it from one bank to another bank, uh, I'd recommend doing cash receipt. And then the last thing is the whole billing process where you apply trust money um, during pre-bill edit. And unlike um, prepaid, the trust money doesn't automatically apply, apply to the current pre-bill's existing balance. You have to know how much you want to apply. Um, you need to know if you want to apply it to fees, if you want to apply it to expenses or certain expenses or certain timekeepers. And on the pre-bill, when you have the pre-bill open, there is a tool called the trust allocator or prepaid allocator that you can use to drill down if you need to. Otherwise, you can just put the amount of the trust to apply on the pre-bill. When you post that bill, that is when the trust voucher gets created in the exact amount um, that you applied on the bill. So a lot of firms don't do that. They had they prefer to create the vouchers themselves, which is to me is just room for error because um, there's miscommunication, um, typos, and this way if you let jurors create for you, the correct amount is created, correct asset and liability, and everything's done for you. So with that voucher, you then create the quick check, or you could do a, a regular check run, whichever uh, you prefer. And um, then you take that check, and you would do a cash receipt. And since it's not the client's money anymore, it's the firm's money, you use the other tab on the cash receipt to uh, post that, uh, that money. Use the other tab, and, the, and you put the operating bank account and the GL account number is always, always, always the trust in transit GL account from the uh, bank that that was withdrawn on. Uh, so let me go to here just to make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. On a cash receipt, I'll open up a new one. So on this other tab, if I was depositing a client's money that I have drawn down and I had earned, now it's the firm's money, I would put in my operating bank account, which is this bank, and then the GL account number for my trust was written from. So if I go to tables and I go to bank accounts, uh, I would write it from this Main Street Trust, if I open that bank up, my trust in transit and ignore all my other uh, GL accounts because I checked those up one day, um, would be 2211. So that is the GL account that I would put right here. Yep, come on. I've got to put all the zeros in there. There. Now I can put the amount there. And I could just put uh, trust from Mr. Uh, account, whatever, or trust applied to bill, or whatever verbiage you want to put there. So this is the other tab, the bank that it's being deposited into, so it's going to debit that asset account, and then this is the trust in transit from what bank account the check was drawn on, and then this credit 
will wash out the debit that hit the trust in transit account when the bill was posted. So when the bill is posted, the fee income or the expense income is recognized right then. So you definitely don't want to do it on the AR tab because the bill's already paid. It's not prepaid. You don't want to give the client the trust money back. It's the firm's. It's not client related at that point. You've already paid the AR. So it goes on the bank account, trust in transit of the bank it was written on, and the amount. If you have questions on that, you can just post that uh, on your little question screen there. Nope. OK. Um, so that's the workflow, pretty much. This is standard. And if you get this, if you get this bottom portion right and you understand this at any given time, you should be able to set, think to yourself, you know, if I have to, if something is done wrong, the check is wrong, the check gotten mixed up in the printer, you know, whatever the case may be, you should be able to um, help figure things, uh, find a resolution to the issue. All right, so next thing we're going to look at the trust accounts and um, how they should balance. So here is uh, just some examples of some issues that I've run into before. Um, the trust asset should always equal your trust liability. So basically, those are your GL accounts that are sitting on the bank. Whatever is defined on your bank account, this asset account should always equal this trust liability. The only time it's hit is this is debited and credited when the cash receipt, and then when the check's written, it's credited and debited. So with that in mind, you can look at this um, spreadsheet that I did. I've got a GL asset and a, and a, uh, a liability account, trust asset liability, which are totally out of balance they, to the note of $8,061.35. Something has gone amok. Um, we look over here to this one on the top right. The GL asset and the liability are in balance. Look at the bottom left. The asset and the liability are in balance. And then I'll take it even further. I was like, okay, the next thing is that those two should balance in themselves trouble if and even get disbarred if you do not have a hundred thousand dollars in the in your trust account bank and your trust account balance report listing all your matters shows that there's a hundred thousand dollars you better have a hundred thousand dollars in the trust bank um, bank account to, to cover that so here's some scenarios where this top G this top trust bank was uh, really bad. Not only was the asset and the liability, did I have to work with that, being out of balance for $8,000, they were short $27,000 on um, the matter balance. Um, this one on the far right top, this is the perfect scenario. You want the asset and the liability to equal, uh, variance in the general ledger, and then you also want those to match to uh, the client balance, the matter balances. The bottom one, um, once again, just shows that the GL accounts match, but the matters were off not too much bad, 248.41. So the firm could easily take that out of their operating account and replenish that. And then the bottom, of course, shows that um, they're both out of balance. And if I saw this, I would think, hmm, 50 from 290, that surely is really close to this 248.41. Maybe they got something, maybe somebody uh, posted something to the wrong thing and did a journal entry would be my first clue on that. If you have questions on how these stood balance, um, don't forget, um, just uh, chat up them a question. So next is going to how did the get like that? Journal it, I always say, no journal entries. Let jurists do it. Don't correct anything with the journal entry. Try not to do any journal entries unless it's something like payroll, accumulated depreciation. Uh, always think before you do a journal entry. Uh, don't correct an AP voucher. Don't correct a trust issue. Uh, the way to correct issues in jurors is to undo the original transaction and do it over again. So you can easily take the um, general ledger trial balance and print out some details and go down through there and look for something that's a GL slash Gen Journal. 
um, it'll stick out like a sore thumb because everything else is going to say cash receipt or AP check or some will say uh, posted bill. So journal entries is generally the main culprit when asset and liability balances uh, and client balances get out of balance and don't match each other. Um, incorrect GL distribution on the payment voucher. So if somebody is writing trust payment vouchers, then they have to be accountable for drilling down to that GL distribution and ensuring that if they're writing a check out of the asset account that they're using the trust liability as well. Sometimes you may think that you're using client cost advance maybe or you think you've picked the right account and somehow you accidentally pick the trust liability or some the trust asset accidentally. So incorrect GL distribution of payment vouchers um, will throw the asset and the liability account out of balance. Um, if you use the incorrect account on the other tab of the cash receipt, I'll have to tell on myself when I first started using yours 18 years ago probably, I thought that that account number field meant the, meant the asset account of the bank. So I'm going through doing a bunch of tests on my own play data and uh, I never saw any journal entries because I was debiting and crediting uh, the same GL account. So I'd put the operating account and the operating account to asset account. So just make sure that that's always the trust in transit when you're depositing money. Um, that is the firm's money that you've drawn down from the client's trust account. But you wouldn't want to use the trust and transit account for anything else. And you wouldn't want to put the liability account there. Um, change made to accounts assigned to the bank uh, bank account. So that just means that you've actually gone into Juris. And uh, at one point in time, you had the trust bank set up like this. And then somebody came in and, and, and changed it, changed this. Or, cha you know, something got changed accidentally or, or and or um, on purpose. Um, also too, uh, if you reconcile your bank accounts through Juris, um, if you've made reconciling entries in there, you can um, get your checkbook in Juris out of balance from your general ledger. So that's another thing that when you're balancing the trust account with your bank statement, there could be things that show up in the Juris checkbook because you added a reconciling entry, but you didn't interface it to the general ledger. And that will show up the big red message on the bank account. <clears throat> I could probably show you on mine, because I'm sure all my bank accounts are out of balance. Uh, we'll just look. Oh, yeah. So you get this big red message like that. That just means that there's something in the checkbook in Juris that's not in the general ledger, or something in the general ledger that's not in the checkbook. And reconciling bank entries is the uh, most common way that that happens. Also, your startup money. A lot of times when you open up a trust account for another office or a new trust account at a bank, I know I work with firms who have multiple trust accounts. Uh, they divvy up their money in different places. Uh, that startup money that you've got to deposit in there, go ahead and create a matter. You should have like an administrative client. Go ahead and create a matter that's your trust matter and deposit that trust money to that trust matter. Just call it firm trust money startup or something and put that $100 or whatever the requirement is, put that money in there. And I also use that matter to run interest through uh, in and out interest because sometimes it's the same amount, sometimes it's not the same amount. So run those transactions each month of your interest in and your interest out using a trust adjustment through that firm um, trust money. That way, when you run your trust bank balance report, the seed money or the startup money is included. And so the total balance, you don't have to do anything. And oh, yeah, well, this one's short $100 because that was our startup money. It just always matches, no thinking. Because if something were to happen and you were no longer with the firm, um, then that other person would probably waste time trying to dig and worry about where's this $100 that we're out of balance on. So deposit that on an admin matter, uh, specifically set aside for trust. Uh, transfers bank made at the bank that are not documented. So sometimes people make wire transfers, or you'll have ACH deposits, or EFTs, or whatever, um, and people forget to document those in Juris. Or maybe they're documented in Juris, and you turn around and you forget to actually do the wire transfer. So that's another way um, that you can throw your 
uh, bank balances out, not to match the client matter balances, and then also not even match your um, checkbook balance. Hey, Tools Kathy, from out there. Uh, yeah. We had a quick question come through. Um, okay. The question is, what report can be used to balance GL to matters? I'm going over that right now. How about oh, that? perfect. <laughs> okay. So we're perfect. going over that now. All righty. So tools for balancing. Um, client matter inquiry, the general ledger trial balance with details and drill down, use your bank statement, the trust account balance report. There's a trust account balance report in Juris. Um, and then there's also, if you've got your suite reporting, there is a trust account report with an as of date and no zero balances that if you will um, request that in the chat, if you've got your suite, I'll make sure that Katie gets that to you or I email it to you. I'll get somebody to email that to you. I'll give it to you as a freebie. Um, but there's a uh, as of date. So the, the thing that you want to do is, okay, I'm out of balance. Look, number one question. How long has it been that way? Uh, did it just happen? Did you just start at the firm and now you've walked into a mess? Um, the, the key is you're going to have to find out when was the last time it was in balance. So on that slide that I showed you previously with all of those out of balance issues, those were true instances. And so I had to sit down with the, with the client and go back with the general ledger and go back with this trust account report as of and run that for three years prior, month by month by month, to see when it was in balance and then the month that it got out of balance. And when it got out of balance, it was no longer on the report. And at that point, I used client matter inquiry which is a tedious problem, process, but it's the only process, and it's the best process. But you can print out the client matter inquiry or just go line by line, look at the date range of the client matter inquiry, print the general ledger trial balance with details for the trust account, and you can view it on the screen. You can view your trial balance, just print preview it, and do a search for each of the amounts and each of the transactions that you see on that client matter ledger. That's the way that we found when well, once we found out, once you find out the matter that caused it to go out of balance, then you start digging for what transaction, um, and generally it'll you'll find the month, so you'll know what month it went out of balance, and you can look in client matter inquiry and start running the general ledger trial. In the case of ours, we had a check that was written, so it was deducted from the client matter. And it was deducted from the general ledger, but obviously not cashed, and obviously not sitting on outstanding checks on the bank statement. So sometimes you find out some really old stuff, and this was like from five years ago. So, of course, that's money that needs to go to the state. But client matter inquiry, line by line, transaction by transaction, uh, use the general ledger trial balance with details, print only for that asset account. Uh, and you may have to go back to bank statements. So, you know, some people keep better records than others. Um, you need to have every outstanding check listed. And I'm, I'm a stickler for clearing those things out once a year um, and dealing with those things. If you can't find the people, uh, turning that money over um, to the state, uh, do whatever you have to do. But <clears throat> there's a trust account balance report in Juris. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an as of. Uh, so if you're fortunate and you've got your suite, then let me know. Um, but these are the tools, okay? You've got reports, Cadabra, and you put in the client matter and that tells you, you know, when, what went wrong and when it went wrong. I wish there was. It would save all of us a bunch of time. So if there's any questions in those, if you need any help, just let us know. I know support can help you with this if you're on tiered service plan. Uh, we do a lot of this. As a matter of fact, I was working on somebody's um, trust account right before I talked with you all. All right, so next we're going to go over what you do um, if a client's credit card or a wire or some kind of trust transaction 
uh, was accidentally deposited in the operating bank, or in some cases, you've got things set up so they go in the operating bank or accident. Uh, maybe somebody sends a check where they're paying AR, the client pays AR, and then the leftover money they won't put in trust. So you have to deposit in the operating account because you can't tear the check in half and take half the check to the operating, the other half the check to the trust account. So let's go over and see what we do there. <clears throat> First thing we do is you would deposit that trust money that went to operating bound. You would deposit it on the other tab of the cash receipt using the trust and transit GL account. So once again, we would be in the cash receipt and we, we would use this other tab. So it's going in the operating and we're going to use the trust and transit. You could actually use any GL account you wanted to right there as long as in the next step, create the quick check or check or the quick check using an AP voucher to the firm vendor, just as long as the GL distribution is that same account. So I always use trust in transit um, because that account generally should be zero unless it's a timing issue where um, you've posted the bills, but you've not the posted the bill with the trust apply, but you've not yet taken that, printed those checks and taken the checks and deposited them in the bank and did the cash receipt in jurors. So deposit on the other tab using trust in transit or some GL account number. Do a quick check or check in an AP voucher to the firm vendor, vendor one or vendor FIRM, and use the trust in transit. Then go and do a trust cash receipt to uh, a check or a wire, deposit the check using the cash receipt on the trust tab to the client matter. So at this point, you give it to the client matter, not when it hit the operating account. If there's any questions, just let me know. Okay. So here's some um, food for thought. Um, I hope that you take this uh, presentation. Katie will send this whole entire slide presentation out to you and keep this uh, for future reference because what we're going to go over now is going to be some problems that either you've already experienced or you may experience one day. So the very first one is what do you do when firm's earnings, well, how do you deposit the firm's earnings? from a client's trust account. And I've gone over it. Trust in transit, GL account, assigned to the bank from which the client's trust money was held. That is the key right there. That's going to wash that account. So if you ever see a balance, when you run your general ledger trial balance and you've got a balance in your trust in transit, it is due to somebody accidentally using the wrong GL account. It is because somebody uh, posted a bill and then they didn't, they haven't written the check and done the cash receipt yet of that firm's money, or when they did the firm, the cash receipt, they used the wrong GL account. But by normal process, that trust and transit account um, should always be zero. And I um, even sometimes recommend if not putting the trust asset and liability on your balance sheet. It's not your money, shouldn't be on there. Some people want it on there. Uh, but put the trust and transit on there because that way. Uh, you get your balance sheet to balance, and then the minute that it doesn't balance, that's one of the first places that you can look and hopefully be the resolution. So that's just how do you deposit the firm's earnings. Next thing that you probably have run into or may run into is the attorney, hang with me because all of these sound a lot alike, but they got, each one of them has something different. So in this instance, the attorney decides not to bill at this time, but you've already posted the bill that had trust applied to it, but you haven't written the truck yet, trust check yet, and been so the bill was posted. What do you do? Unpost the bill, which is going to create a negative trust voucher. So you show the bill, and you show that when you do that, it unposts the trust, and when it does that, it automatically creates a trust voucher to the firm vendor. Remember, there's already a positive trust voucher out there ready for you to write the check, but you hadn't written the check yet. So the trust check hadn't been written or printed, so now you've got two vouchers out there, one for the positive 5000 
from posting the bill, one from the negative 5,000, and now you would just <clears throat> write a check. And oh, excuse me, I wouldn't write a check. Sorry about that. I void both of those vouchers. Highlight the row, tools, void voucher. Highlight the row, tools, void voucher. All right, issue number three. What do you do when the attorney decides to not bill at this time? Like, make up your mind, please. Uh, the bill with the trust hasn't been applied. Uh, it was already posted. The trust, trust check has been printed and posted, but the check has not been deposited in the operating bank or in, uh, in jury. So, unpost the bill. It's normal. Unpost the bill. It's going to create the negative voucher to the firm. But the, notice on this screen, the positive voucher is not out there. Why? Because you've already written the check and used it. So next step here, trust check has been printed and posted. So we want to void the trust check under transactions, void check. You would want to void the trust check and be sure to answer yes to void the voucher. Then you would just have, need to go and void the other negative voucher, the other uh, negative voucher. Or if you forget to answer yes here, you can go back and void both vouchers in vendor inquiry. And when you void the check, it's going to give the money back to the client. All right, next, number four, the attorney, he needs to make his mind up again. He decides to not bill at this time. You've already posted the bill that you applied to trust. The trust check has been printed and posted, and it's been deposited in an operating bank and insurance. So now what do you do? Can't go back. Give me that check back. Too late. So unpost the bill, just as always. Uh, you got the uh, negative trust voucher. You can go ahead and void it when you post the bill. The trust check has been printed and posted. I say it has been deposited. Hang on. Sometimes I get confused. The trick has been deposited up in the bank and injurious. Okay. Uh, void the trust check and the voucher to the firm vendor. Void the check returns the money back to the client. Trust check has been deposited in the firm's operating account. Since the trust check has already been deposited at the bank, you're so, sorry. Ignore that other side, and I will correct that. Since the trust check's already been deposited at the bank, you're not able to void the check. So you create an AP voucher using the firm vendor. Ensure the GL distribution is the trust in transit. You create the quick check with the AP voucher. And the deposit, it's already been deposited in the firm's operating account. you got to deposit the money back in the client's trust account by creating a cash receipt on the trust tab and give the money back to them. So please disregard. I'm going to delete this slide right here. You can't void the check. This got a little confusing creating this because the scenarios were so much alike. So create a check since the money's been deposited for the, in, the, in the operating account. Create a check to the firm vendor. <clears throat> And uh, then take that check and deposit it back in the trust account on the client matter. Questions on that? If I made that more confusing than it should have been, I'll take that slide out. Then next we've got the attorney decides not to use the client's trust money. The bill with the trust applied was posted. The truck has, trust check has not been printed or posted. But you don't want to unpost the bill and lose those pre-bill edits. Okay? So create a negative. So this time we're not even going to unpost the bill. We're going to leave. We're going to leave uh, the bill. Uh, and it doesn't matter. The client doesn't has told you that you said, hey, we've sent you a bill. Um, we're not going to unpost it. We'll just give you the money back. You got to, you know, give them a call and say, just pay that bill. Uh, we're you still owe that bill. So we're going to create a negative cash receipt on the AR tab because that trust applied to the pre bill paid that bill off. So we're unapplying it. So we're going to take the money off of the AR tab. 
which reverses that trust money that would apply. And then we're going to create a positive cash receipt for $3,000. And we're going to put it on the other tab using the Trust in Transit GL account. So this takes the money off the client and then it's going to prepare us for this next step. The trust check has not been printed or posted. Void the positive trust voucher for the firm vendor because a check hadn't been written. And you've taken a, away the trust money from the client. So basically what this does is a zero cash receipt. I've usually called these zero cash receipts. You could say check amount zero and do this in one clean sweep with a check amount of zero with a negative 3,000 here and a positive 3,000 uh, here. Next scenario is you're not going to use the client's trust money. Bill with trust was applied. You don't want to unpost the bill and lose the pre-bill edits. You talk to the client and they know that um, they still need to send you the money, that you're not going to use their trust money. The trust check has been printed and posted but not deposited in the bank. Uh, so uh, follow the same steps from the previous issue to create the cash receipt. Do that again. Void the trust check because it hadn't been deposited and the voucher. Uh, and then when you void the check, of course, it's going to give the client back uh, their money. So it's simple. Do the step. Steps from the previous slide for the cash receipt and void the check and the voucher. One more scenario. I think we got one more. Um, the attorney decides not to use the client's money. Trust was applied. You're not going to. Post the bill. Trust check has been printed and, and in juror. So uh, we're going to create a negative cash receipt, kind of like we did in slide five. Or, or issue number five to reverse the trust money that was applied. And we're going to do a positive cash receipt on the other tab using the trust in transit. Deposit in the bank. So at this point, you've got to create an AP voucher to get the funds out of the operating account. So uh, put it to the firm vendor. Sure, the GL distribution is the trust in transit. Create the quick check. You can create a regular check if you want to. Uh, or instead of creating a voucher and doing a check or a voucher and a check, you can do it all on the fly uh, in a quick check. So create a quick check and then deposit that money back into the client's trust account by just doing a cash receipt on the trust tab to the client, to the matter, to the specific trust bank for that amount. And that's going to give the client back their money and bring their uh, balance back like it should uh, in jurors. So those are some scenarios. Um, probably seems a little confusing because they're pretty much uh, alike, similar. And um, But if you come into any of those issues, you should be able to follow along with those and um, correct your issues. So with that being said, questions. Anybody have any questions? Okay, do we have any um, uh, questions out there? We sure do. Well, first off, I want to thank you so much, Kathy, for your very informative session. Um, and just remind everyone one more time, if you do have questions for Kathy, please feel free to ask them via the questions pane located on your webinar control panel. So the question we have, um, is our trust account balance report doesn't have an option to pick an as of date. Could you tell us why that might be? Um, if you use the trust account report in here in Juris, it's under trust, uh, trust account balance report, there are no options down here. You, the only option you have is to say don't show me any zero balances. In the drop down, there's not an as of date as well. So, and the same goes for Juris Suite. The 
the same reports are in here. Um, it has those exact same reports. However, we have one that I will give you as a freebie. So the trust account uh, balance report is in Juris Suite. No balance for zero. So this is the same one that I would run. It's already got the no zero balances. Notice in here, uh, you can't pick an as of date. But I've got this freebie right here, trust account balance report with as of date, no zeros. Does exactly what I want it to do, which lets me put in an as of date. So I can run it for a single trust bank. And then I can say as of whatever day I want by simply either typing in the day, picking it from the calendar. Whatever. So if you have your suite and you'd like this. Now, it's been a while since I've looked at this, but if any of you are on the phone that just has Juris Core, there used to be, and I'm just thinking this, uh, there was a Juris Supplemental uh, Report Database, and there's also a Gold Reports Database, some old Microsoft Access databases that you could probably reach out to um, Juris customer support and ask them about the Juris supplemental report database or the gold reports database. I think, but don't hold me to that, I think that there was a trust account balance with an as of in one of those databases, but I could be wrong. I'm, I'm going off of old memory, so um, I could be wrong, like I said. So. Uh, let Ka let Katie know if you want that Juris Suite report, and we'll get that to you. All right, great. Thanks, Kathy. Um, our next question is: Can you give examples of when you would or would not use trust adjustment? My rule of thumb for that is, like I said, if the if the money is already in the firm, already been deposited in the in the, in the uh, bank, and all you need to do is move it from one matter to another. Uh, I would use a trust adjustment, but if it rule, I mean, they kind of do the same thing. Um, I would say minus a dollar if I wanted to move it off this matter, and I would hit save. I would say transfer to matter 14. I hit save, then I would hit new, going to 14, uh, TR. Matter doesn't have a trust count, and I'm like, yep, and it's going to be a dollar, and transfer. Uh, from matter zero. So money was already there, um, and it's going to wash on the bank account. I took it out of one. I'm sorry, don't do what I do. Do what I say. This would be a mistake. Always when it's the same bank. Don't ever transfer. I would never do a trust adjustment from one bank to another. I would always do a cash receipt for that because it's new money going into a new bank. And then, of course, you have to post these. So I'd have to post this. That's just my rule. I've seen documentation where Or they say either or. Um, what? 
Well, well, well. Uh, there is a ways only, and I have a workflow for setting up trust banks accounts for expenses only. That's what mine are for. This is my, remember, this is my data. I've had about it, about uh, had the DOS version for probably the first couple of years, and so that means I've had this for about 15 years, and it just grows and grows and grows. So y'all, a lot of this gotcha. is from testing. A lot of this is from testing, but I have set up with a client. I uh, can't remember who it was, but in Houston, I believe, where we had a uh, one bank account, one bank where um, it was actually in the same bank. Okay, but uh, we divided, we created two banks in Juris, one to represent fees and one to uh, represent expenses. So It is doable. Oh, you can, in quick checks, in quick checks, when you do a new quick check in here, and I will say I'm going to take this out of my um, operating bank, and I'm going to the firm vendor, um, you can hit new and give an invoice number. You can do the double click and drill down into here. And a quick check is creating the voucher at the same time I'm creating the check because it's supposed to be quick. Somebody walks in the door. So I could create this and say, this is invoice number. I'm giving them back their $100 and ensure my GL distribution and everything's correct, return of funds or whatever that is, and I hit save. So in this case, well, can I have an AP account? Come on, come on, come on. Uh, in this case, I'm creating this voucher here. I don't have to do that. If I wanted to, I can create the AP voucher from inside vouchers. Go here and create a payment voucher and do it this way. Whichever way you like, there's always more, way, more ways to skin a cat. And invoice number, here's my $100, and refund and save. Well, darn it. I forgot. I just changed my day where I had two AP accounts. Sorry. So I save. So now when I go in and post this, uh, when I post this batch, tools, post, my voucher's out there. The same exact voucher that had I gone to transactions, quick checks, I would have created that voucher on the fly. Um, so I can come in here now and do a quick check batch, put in the bank that I'm writing this from, the vendor's firm. I don't have to hit new to create a new voucher. I already have a voucher. So I can go to tools, select voucher. I can find my hundred dollar, there it is, Woo, thousand dollar, my thousand dollar refund and hit save and I'm ready to go. No drilling down. So either way, create the voucher, write the check or write the quick check or just do it all in here. Does that answer your question? All right, great. Um, our next question is, when I try to run a report from inception, because our GL is off as well, I get a null error. Do you know what is causing this? Um, do you know what report? And is it in Juris or is it, would it be in Juris Suite? What report and your your suite? They're not saying yet, but we'll give them a second to. Um, okay. Yeah. Give them a second that in to the chat box. Okay. In the meantime, we have another question. So let's go with that one, okay. and then we can come back to the. Okay. Question. Yeah, we'll come they back. Just said, uh, all right. Yeah, we'll come back to that one. The next okay. question is. Uh, she says, hi, Kathy. It's your friend Colleen from Burlington. Um, We're not answering any questions of hers. Hi, Colleen. Uh, uh, she says, I have a very quickly, 
I have very quickly reviewed our balance sheet, and my trust assets do not equal my trust liabilities. Is that where you would verify those balances being out of balance? If so, I went back to our conversation um, in March, and, and they were not in balance. So, Colleen, reach out to, to us on TST, and we will look into that because at live, we took the balances that we converted from, so you can always check prior software and look to see if the asset and the liability balance there. If not, we, we know at least we have to go back prior to March to start digging to find out why it didn't balance. Jurist, yeah. not juris suite. Core juris? Okay, so core, basically yeah. to, to, to see if your general ledger is out of balance, I would run the general ledger report. You can can take the you can take do not Not matters. Run it. This is going on a set. And I would go back and I would pick a year. I would just say maybe pick 2013 and choose the specific account numbers in here. Hit the plus sign, choose account number, and put in whatever your asset account number is. I'm going to use 1,000 to 1,000, or you could put in 1,000 to like mine's 2217. Hit OK. <clears throat> Print this and then go back for, so this is 2013, see if they balance. So here is my, uh, I don't have it on there, or my prepaid, I didn't go further far enough. Anyway, I don't have any money there. But anyway, look at your asset account 
by going back a year or a couple years, keep going back until you see that they do balance. Hopefully, they will. at one point in time they're in balance. And then once you find the year that it went, then you got to start digging for the month. So you're going to have to keep digging in the general ledger, running the general ledger trial balance until you get the year that it's out of balance, and then narrow it down to the month that it went out of balance. And then once it runs that, once you find that. Then check this box to show details, and you can check this box to do the drill down. And when you run the pre run this, you'll be able to to take all of the details. We'll pretend like this first thing. You'll be able to take all all of the details of one account, the asset account, and compare it to all of the details of the of the liability account. You should see AP checks and TB cash. AP check, TB cash. AP check, TB cash. If you see GL Gen Journal, GL slash G E N J R N L, that's a journal entry, and more than likely it's the culprit that uh, threw it out of balance. If you're for matter balances, the thing is, while you're going back and checking that asset and liability, also run, you don't have the trust account balance um, as a report. And you can't do an as of date in here. You really need to check to see if support has a trust account balance as of report. Seems, there, there's a date one. Aha. But I don't think this is this is going to be from the this is this report is. Just the bank. Yeah, this might would have. Or always purchase Jura Suite. <laughs> Move to Jura Suite. So when the client matter only. balance. <laughs> yeah, if only. Client, when, when the client matter balance is out, uh, it's a little bit harder to, uh, to dig. Hopefully, you don't have hundreds of pages of uh, clients and matter balances. And, um, because it's basically sometimes it just boils down to taking the trust ledger history on the matter, which you can go to uh, Client Matter Inquiry, where you can run the trust ledger history as well. Um, and you can go to Client Matter Inquiry and put in the matter, change this to trust, run the ledger, print it out to Excel by exporting this. might give you a little bit of um, a better uh, view. And that way you can like sort and group stuff so you can export it to an Excel spreadsheet. Trust for Hootie matter zero. Whoops, can't put a dash, sorry. I mean a slash zero, one, two, three, four, five, and hit OK. And it exports and go out there and you would you want to make sure for that. Every entry in here, general ledger, um, and you could print the details of the general ledger account from whatever year you see. Mine goes all the way back to 2004, 2001. I told you, had this day a long time. So definitely, I would not want to have to verify this trust balance. But sometimes it boils down to that, and you got to look, search. The general ledger trial balance details for an amount. You know, search for five comma one six zero point four zero. Search for every one of these transactions until you find them in the general ledger. Check them off. If you okay. uh, don't mind getting to it, I don't mind at all. All right, our last question is, if you have tried to research an out-of-balance and have gone back 
years and, and decided that you want to write a journal entry to fix it, what accounts mm -hmm. would you use for the offset? So if you're talking about the liability is out of balance from the uh, asset, then I would probably take some type of miscellaneous expense account, firm expense account, um, something down in the expenses, maybe another expense, and I would uh, debit that account and credit the liability account. Make note of it and why you did it. Uh, because it could be that, you know, months down the road, all of a sudden it comes to fruition that, oh, that's what that was. Oh, hold up a minute. And then you can always go back and reverse that. You wouldn't want to use a balance sheet account. It would throw your balance sheet out of balance probably. So I would use another expense because more than likely that's what happened. Somebody wrote a check. Somebody did something and, and um, uh, should have used an expense account and more than likely use a uh, liability account. Or if you've got multiple bank accounts, maybe one's money is in the other one's money. All right, great. Ready? That's all that we'll be able to get to today. I do have a few that I'll connect you with offline. Um, okay, sure. But um, that officially concludes today's webinar, and I would like to thank you, Kathy, once again for your expert advice on today's topic, and thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time out of your